Contentment is dangerous, and if you're not careful, it's gonna stunt your growth. And who wants to stop growing? Not me. I leave you alone, I just want my credit. I'm about to tell the truth and never embellish. To my family, I'm forever indebted. To the ones that hold me down, I'm forever indebted. Welcome to the Wealthy Mindset Podcast. I am your host, Roberto Swift. Life is hard, but God is good. On this episode, we're going to talk about contentment and how it's dangerous and something that you should avoid at all costs. Now, when I refer to contentment, I am talking about being comfortable, but not just comfortable, but too comfortable. So comfortable to the point where things begin to slip. So let's get into this. The interesting thing about animals is they do what's in their nature. Even if they don't think about it or they don't try to, they just do it. And take cows, for instance. Cows will be more than happy to sit there and just chew and mile down some grass. That's all they need. And if you take dogs or cats and you give them their cat food and their dog food and it's the exact same thing no flavor variance in they will eat that stuff for the entirety of their lives try to feed mac and cheese to someone for their every single day for the rest of their life it's not gonna work in fact a lot of people who grew up on certain foods will not eat that as an adult because they had it so much see we're not made to be content And sure, there is a Bible scripture that a lot of people use to interpret it as them being content, but we're going to dive into that in a second here because that's not what it is. And that's not what it means. See, it says, I am not saying that this because I am need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to have to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content. In any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in wants, I can do all things who gives me strength. Now, this is Philippians. This is Paul talking, and this is the NIV version of chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. Now, here is the thing. If you look over at the different version of it, let's say the ESV version, it says that, not that I am speaking of ever being, of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hungry. I'm going to say that again. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hungry, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Now, this verse has been taken out of context because it's not telling you to be satisfied with the situation that you're currently in. It's not saying that you need to be in a situation where you just accept it as this is what it is and this is what it's going to be permanently. No, it's said that he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Now, what this says is that God is on the inside, okay? And what that means is that you can do more because of the strength that God gives you, no matter what's going on on your circumstances. It doesn't matter if it's snowing outside. It doesn't matter if it's a sunny day or if it's a rainy day. You can do things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do in your own strength, no matter what is going on in your environment. That sounds very different than saying that you're just content with life. No, you're content with your inner self because what's inside of you will produce on the outside. And so you know, when you know what's on the inside of you, you're content. You're at peace with what's on the inside because you know that what's on the inside of you is bigger than what's on the outside. Because God is a magnificent and plentiful and he is abundant in his resources. And he gives us strength. See, the object of your faith is only as strong as the object. So if you have a little bit of faith in a little tiny God, you're not going to be able to do very much because you won't believe it. But when you have a rock solid faith where you are able to, let's say, imagine that faith is a rope. And if your rope is made out of straw, it's going to break. But if it's made out of titanium cords, 
then your faith will allow you to pull you to doing things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. It gives you the confidence and the certainty. So contentment is all about being comfortable, comfortable with the situation where you think that, well, this is what it is and this is what it's going to be. You exchange what could be potential for what is. And what is is always smaller than what could be. So you have to be able to think bigger and understand that it's not okay to be content. In fact, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable because whenever you level up to another level, guess what? You're going to face new obstacles and new situations. It's interesting how when a baby is born, it freaks out because everything around it is different. But ask anybody if they're willing to go back into their mother's womb. They will say no. Because once they got out and experienced this new level of interacting and being able to live life at a higher quality of level, then they know that there's no way you can get me to go back. See, on the last episode, I was going to talk to you about how I was in this deep depression because of my contentment. I was working middle class job and I was had friends and I was just going about life and just go to work, go home, relax and just entertain myself. But something began to creep in and I just began to feel unsettled. Like this is, this is really it. Like I'm missing something. And the reason I felt that way is because I was made for more. Sure, I was getting a nice paycheck where I was able to cover my bills, but you got to move from surviving into thriving. And you can't thrive in a situation where you are just settling in and just accepting life for what it is and not seeking more. See, the Bible is very clear that we are supposed to be diligent with our hands. It says that we are supposed to do everything to the best of our ability. Not for men, but for God. But when it happens is when we get into these situations where things are okay, we just say, I don't want to know anything else. And that's done out of fear. It's not done out of love for ourselves and other people, but it's done out of fear. And fear always paralyzes you. Imagine being strapped down into a lazy boy. Not because you want to. But because you're paralyzed. And so I'm here to give you inspiration because you can be more than you are. And you can do more than you ever dreamed. But you got to act on your faith. Because faith without works is dead. And you want to know something interesting? Not all caterpillars turn into butterflies. Some die in the process. Yes, not in, a, not in the process of being in the cocoon. No, I'm talking about some calipers die before they even make it into the cocoon. See, it's not a given that you're going to be able to fly. But it's a given if you never try, you will not achieve it. That's a given. So, understand me when I say that being content is not something that was designed for us. Because everyone has a purpose. And when you find that purpose as it evolves and it grows and you cultivate that situation, guess what happens? You begin to experience a higher quality of life for yourself and for others. you be able to get used in ways that you never experienced or never expected. But we have this tendency to get comfortable. And what happens when we get comfortable is it's like a little kid and they have a toy ice cream cone. And then they say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Mommy, feed me, feed me. And the mommy turns around, she says, okay, stop, stop, no worries. And the kid is content with hanging on to this little toy ice cream cone. But the mom's like, I need you to give me the toy. I need you to give me the ice cream cone. I don't want to, it's my favorite toy. No, no. But eventually... The mom takes the ice cream cone, the little toy ice cream cone. The mom takes it in exchange 
she gives the kid a real ice cream cone. The kid ain't never seen a real ice cream cone in their life. But when they get it and the mom says, taste it, taste and see that it's good. And the kid's like, no, I don't want it. I don't want to. You just took my favorite toy. Then the mom takes the ice cream and licks it and says, mm, this is good. Now you try. The kid takes the ice cream. And then what happens? They taste that sugar. And oh, is it good. And at this point, the kid completely forgets about the freaking toy ice cream cone. At this point, the kid only going to want the real thing. Sure, they'll play with what they had before, but in comparison, in their mind, oh, there's no difference. And that's what happens with our prayers. A lot of time, God is saying, I need you to give me this, but it's going to make you feel uncomfortable. See, when you uproot a tree, you need to take everything. Otherwise, you're just purging it. And when you purge something, it grows back even stronger. Even if you didn't want it to be there. And it boils down to taking care of symptoms versus the root cause. And when we pray for things, God always tries to take care of the root cause. But we fight him on it. Because we don't understand that there's something better in which we are going to receive. See, what Satan means for evil, God uses for good. But you also got to understand, too, that God is in the position to make sure that what he's using for good is going to outnumber what it is that Satan had for you. It's all about perspective. And that's why you got to open up your mindset to understand that being content is not something for us. See, sure, God rested on the seventh day, but it was after he completed all of his work. And each day he had different things and different tasks that he did. But he did it when he was done. And it wasn't something permanent. You'd be crazy to think that God is not at work in this world right now. See, we were made for more because we have work to do. Before Adam and Eve left the garden, they had work. They had to till the garden. Adam got to name the animals. There was work to do. But I assure you that you can have fun while you're working. In fact, it gives you purpose. But the way the economy in the world is set up, we go out and we get jobs. And jobs are only short-term solutions to long-term problems. And there's different ways to achieve your purpose. But the point is that when your real work, a lot for a lot of people haven't even started yet. Because they haven't enacted and started working on developing themselves for that purpose. And when we get content and comfortable, that is nothing more than a simple distraction. It distracts us from greatness. But when you're focused and you have your mind on the prize of what it is that you desire to do, oh, you will muster up the strength. But it's important not to get stuck in these traps of thinking that a situation that you're in is all it's going to be. Because that's simply not the case. See, when you know what's on the inside of you, that will mean that no matter what's on the outside of you cannot affect you. Because when you're built, when you're saying, I'm built for this. When you say that, I know that I have the spirit of God living inside of me. And that spirit is stronger than the spirits that's on the outside of me. Then that gives you confidence. And when you have confidence, you can be calm in the eye of the storm. You can be calm in a hurricane. Because you just move and drift from left to right. Because you know something that the storm doesn't know. And they know that there's nothing they can do. To what's on the inside of you. See. Out of the mouth. The prophet speaks. Words of encouragement. But it comes from a source. And that source that it comes from. Is not 
in a state of, it is what it is, meh, no. It comes from knowing. And see, when people ask, how are you doing? And you say, I'm okay. I'm fine. You're not thriving. But we were meant to thrive. Because that is how you make things grow. The dangerous thing about contentment is that it creates this false reality where you think that everything is fine, but you pull back the curtain and you realize you are in prison. Because you're not operating in your fullness. And see, when you know what it is on your inside of you, and that's what we're going to talk about on the next episode. When you know, when you really know what it is on the inside of you, you are just ready to burst like a wine bottle. Just ready to burst at the seams. But when you don't know, it creates this mentality where you're like, it is what it is. Life is fine. What's up, the sky? And you don't want to be in that situation. I don't want to be in a situation where I think I am inside of a box. And I think I'm free, but I'm really not. Because when someone asks me, can I do this or that? I'm like, no. Or I desire, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. But you had the idea in your head in the beginning to do something that would have been super beneficial to you and others. But you don't act on it. Because you have something called limiting beliefs that's circling you. And you have to be able to step outside of yourself. In order to truly do the things that are important. And things that will really make the needle move in your favor. But you can't do those things if you're simply says, Ah, I'm fine with it. Ah, I'm content. But we're not supposed to be content at all. We're supposed to thrive in our domain. And in order to do that, we have to be ambitious. And we have to go after the things that matter to us. Because a shot that's never taken is a shot that's always missed. And essentially, that is what sin is. Sin is falling short of the glory of God. And if God has made you for a purpose and you are not moving towards that purpose, you are falling short. And the great news is that the Holy Spirit is right there on your shoulder to guide you and to counsel you. But you got to expand your mindset because if you serve a big God, then you should be doing big things. And you say, well, I'm small. But God uses the small things to confound the wise. And so when you understand that God's wisdom is far bigger than ours. It's like comparing an ant's thoughts to a dog's thoughts. They're not the same. So I encourage you not to just accept what you've been given. But use your creativity to create something greater. Because in the end... That's what we we're made to do, to create. And so this is the Wealthy Mindset Podcast. I am your host, Roberto Swift, and I am out. Out.